and welcome back now as you can see in front of me on my brand new a3 size green mat we have this hobby components logic analyzer what's a logic analyzer you say well this is going to be a very very useful tool to us arduinoites because it will allow, allow you to inspect the communication buses that we use and don't let all this terminology put you off if you don't understand what i'm saying um, what you do get though is pretty little pictures like that one shown on screen right now and uh, that's what we're going to be aiming for to show you how that little picture um, came about however in the meantime what uh, what we're going to do is um, fire up the hobby components logic analyzer connect it to a couple of i squared c lines just to show you how useful it is to debug things when things go wrong now straight away I'm going to say if you've um, never used I squared C sometimes known as IIC well one I can't believe it if you're working on the Arduino because so many things are controlled by I squared C um, or SPI for that matter but I won't be demoing SPI that's just a tad little more um, work than I really wanted to do this video so we're going to stick with I squared C and it is really really easy now as you can see down here let me just uh, get rid of that little graph P uh, pleasing though it is and this is indeed what we're going to be ending up with it's that it's that graph there okay it's just a superimposed window on my screen here let me um, get rid of that right so down here you can see what I've actually got there is a clock module so this is a DS I don't know 1317 or whatever it's called it's not the one I like I like the 3231 much more accurate temperature controlled and so on but this one was the first one I laid hands on in my toolbox so that was the first one we used after all this is just a demo of uh, what we're going to do now what happens with this um, module just like every other I squared C module is that it's connected to the Arduino via two power lines that's the uh, red and the brown here and then two data lines that's the orange and yellow okay and they are the um, I squared C lines and as you can see my um, desk is slowly falling apart because I'm having this is the first thing I'm gonna have to tell you about then this this device which plugs into your um, USB port on your computer I've had a little bit of trouble in as much that it has to plug directly into my computer for it to um, work now that was after a whole evening of playing around with this device plugged in normally to my hub worked beautifully great next day not a sausage okay and I've eventually traced it to the fact um, that I had to plug it into my computer and I've had that trouble before with other computer type devices for example my scanner I have a simple A4 scanner um, I had to plug it into my computer for absolutely ages and then one day I tried it again in my USB hub worked great so I don't know what's going on there perhaps my hub is overloaded or something or perhaps it needs a better power supply whatever so this is plugged directly into my computer at the moment okay one of the USB ports at the back um, but the Arduino is plugged into my standard hub great now the the communication between the Arduino and this down the orange and yellow wires here is the I squared C bus now I squared C bus sounds all very technical and all that but what it is it's a it's an agreed upon upon protocol where electronic devices can make sense of and um, in, interpret the pulses coming down the wire because that's all it is don't don't think there's anything fancy well all right it's clever but it's not fancy it's just a series of pulses coming down those wires and because they are precisely precisely timed uh, this device and this device can all make sense of it all right and you can hang multiple multiple items off just two wires which is why the i squared c is so great okay so far so good let's um let's get this uh, moving a little bit and I'll show you first of all the software that's running to install the software for this and hobby components make no uh, qualms about it they say this device is designed to ro run with the SIGROC Windows Mac or Linux software they don't actually supply the software per se they just give you a pointer to a page and it's all open source and everything but it does run well pretty much like the much more expensive um, computer uh, computer visible um, 
logic analyzers. So you haven't got a display, we haven't got a screen here, but we have to look at the computer to see the result. Um, okay, it's not obviously this this isn't expensive. It's about twelve pounds, I think I paid from Amazon. You can get it just about anywhere though. But as hobby components, I think they've got a store in the UK. It might even be British, I'm not sure. Um, but it was from Amazon, next day to delivery, so I bought it from Amazon. Okay, so far so good. Let's have a look at the next bit. And this is the actual device that I purchased from Amazon. As I say, it was only um, about £12, £12.56. And this is the American uh, Amazon.com version. Forget the shipping, that's back to the UK, but you can get it in Amazon.com just the same. Um, now it does say here uh, at the top, okay, it's USB, 24 mega samples, 8 channel, 24 megahertz logic analyzer. Take that with a slight pinch of salt because even in the um, instructions it does say this 24 megahertz speed is very dependent on how much data you can push into your computer. Now I suspect that if you connect this up to um, a USB 3 port it might behave a little bit better but for what we're doing here now it's absolutely fine all right and for £12.56 I thought I've got to have a go at that and the reason why I'm interested in it is because my scope does not have a logic analyzer I wish it did but uh, I couldn't afford one of those not a chance so let's see how this one um, moves on now the software if I just go to the hobby um, if I go to the forum on hobby components we'll see here it is so this is where it talks about the actual device gives us another little picture but it does tell you in quite some detail um, what you need to do to install it oh here's the um, here's the little thing about saying you know if you want rates above 4 megahertz it would, performance depends on your computer so if you've got a Cray computer in your bedroom great you'll have no trouble at all but if you've got a rather old Celeron or something yeah you might be pushing it a little bit anyway so it gives you some nice little um, pictures to look at uh, but more importantly somewhere it tells you how to actually install it so it says Windows users blah 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 now um, it installed okay I'll follow the instructions to the letter it gives us a link to the SIGROC open source so here is here is the Windows setup right it tells you that how to install a driver um, what you got to do step one step two so it's not complicated but it is a little bit drawn out to probably take you I don't know, half an hour to get all the software down and the driver installed. Um, and also there's another bit of software, this one here. Z I don't even know how to say that. Is it Zadig or something? Zadig? Anyway, basically that's the driver that's going to connect this to your computer. Um, doesn't matter if you've got um, USB drivers already connected to other things. This is an extra one you're going to have to use. Okay, that's, that's fine. It's not a problem. It's all pretty easy and straightforward um, oh here's a nice little picture of pulse view now of course this has got eight channels but i squared c as i just mentioned is only using two of these wires uh, two of these wires in fact and that's the beauty of i squared c isn't it in fact uh, let me just draw you a very quick diagram in case you're not familiar with i squared c's those are people who are shouting at me get a move on get a move on don't worry it's only going to take about 20 seconds so a very, very brief uh, overview of what I2C is then. Um, your Arduino, and indeed any module that supports it, will have two pins or lines on it, one for serial data and one for serial clock. Now these lines effectively extend out forever, okay? And what you then do is attach modules to those lines. Yes, you can attach multiple modules to those lines. That's the whole point. So in our case, we're going to take a tapping from SDA, SCL, and this is going to be our DS clock. Okay, whichever one it is. As I say, I prefer the 3231. Well, that's not the one we're using here, but it works in exactly the same way. Now, you might have other modules elsewhere hanging off here. And you can have, as I say, an awful lot of modules um, and if you've ever used um, an LCD screen, for example, like this one here, something like that. Now, on the back of this, we actually have this little backpack module, okay, which I have um, gone into some detail actually in a totally different video. But uh, if you see there, right at the um, the top you'll see that it says ground VCC SDA SCL and that's all the wires you need and when you consider that two of those are in fact power it just means you've got two wires for data and that's the beauty of I squared C so what's the downside of here you say 
Well, the I squared C bus, so the data running down these wires, is normally at something like 100 kilohertz, which in today's money is pretty slow. You can get it up to 400k, and indeed you can get it sort of 1 megahertz and above. Um, but of course these little things wouldn't work at that speed. They're designed for the fairly low speed I squared C. Now each one of these items on here that are hanging on here, as we've um, mentioned, they have an address. So in hex, so 0x, which is what we mean by hex, uh, this one is 68. Um, the LCD screen, so if this was an LCD screen, this might have an address of hex 27. Okay, and these are listening to what's on this bus here, going, is there anything for me? Is there anything for me? Is there any oh yes, that, that little packet you're just about to send down is for me. I'll deal with that. And this one totally ignores it. Pretty good, yes. Um, pretty simple as well, to be quite honest. And to be quite honest, you're probably using I squared C without even knowing about it if you've done anything at all with the Arduino, apart from flashing an LED, that is, of course. So that was a very necessarily brief overview of what I squared C does, and you're probably using it without even knowing it, to be quite honest. So as I say, I'm using a real-time clock here, uh, the DS, whatever it was I said, um, and it just works fine. Now, if we go over to our code window, this is the sketch I'm using. Now, this is a sketch from a very old video. I can't remember which one it was, but it was one of the earlier ones I did on the comparison between the uh, date time modules the sketch itself is not important uh, perhaps what is important um, we'll highlight first of all the address of the unit um, as i mentioned um, each i squared unit has uh, i squared c unit has a an address a unique address obviously otherwise it wouldn't know where you are imagine your house in a road it has to know uniquely where to deliver each packet or more to the point it's not quite like that is it i mean packets come down the line and each one of these is listening and basically you're waiting for the postman and he's going around chatting number 46 number 58 or in this case number 68 and you go ah oh, that's me great i'll have that one okay and if nobody claims it then it just sort of dies on the on the bus i guess i don't quite know what happens there um anyway um, now, the, what you might be asking is, how do I know what um, hex address my unit's at? Well, there's um, another sketch that I put up, and of course, this particular sketch that I'm going to show you, um, that there's dozens of examples. There might be one on the Arduino site now, actually. I, mean, I did actually write this one yonks ago, and we're talking, you know, probably a couple of years longer than that. So, which one was it? It was possibly that one. So, this is basically as it mentions up there it's a scanner so there's the there's the name of it it's a scanner and it's very very simple what it does is send out uh, a pulse on that i squared c bus for each and every address that could possibly exist on it very very quickly and if it gets an acknowledgement it goes ah well obviously you're you're there aren't you and if it doesn't get an acknowledgement um, then it just continues with the next one um, we can see how that works actually as part of this uh, demo. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? I'll just modify that. We don't want to go through uh, 255 addresses before we find one, but I can certainly modify the range it searches for. Okay, that's uh, that one then. Now the the date time sketch that I'm using to well, first of all, a set the time and then read back the time from this module. Uh, Hexadecimal address 68, which is 104-ish uh, decimal. Well, it better not be ish, otherwise it's not going to find it. Okay, um, let's uh, have a look quick. Now, we don't really care what it's doing in terms of, um, in, you know, code, logic. You can have a look at the other video for that. But the bits that are important, it goes, this sort of line here, for example, is important. Because it says, right, I want to transmit something down the wire, that's the name of the Arduino library that we've included, actually, the wire library, which Arduino themselves now say, do you know what, that was a mistake, we should have called it twin wire or I2C or something, not just wire. Sounds too much like the one wire, doesn't it? But anyway, wire.begin transmission and then the address to which you want to actually send it, in this case, hex 68. And then you write stuff down it, okay? So it does all this write, write, write bit, and then at the end of it you go, and that's me finished. Thank you very much. 
Now that's to set the time, that's writing down there. Um, you still write down the, the why, even when you want to read stuff, if that doesn't make too much gobbledygook. the gook. Because look, here's the read time function on this um, sketch. And what we say is, begin the transmission down to that same address, and then you say, uh, I want to write zero down there, which tells it to set a particular car command mode, all right? As it says here, in fact, it sets the register pointer to zero, zero hex. Um, and then down here we say, wire requests from that address, okay, seven bytes. So we're looking for seven bytes. And what are those seven bytes, you ask? I'm glad you did, because what we've got here then, seven bytes are going to be sent back from here. Uh, we, they're going to, we're going to read the second, the minute, the hour, day of week, uh, starts from zero Sunday, that one, uh, the day of the month, the month itself, and the year. Um, and then we're going to display it on screen. And for everybody in the world who doesn't conform to DDMMYYYY, uh, that's the format we're going to be using, okay? so But it'll be pretty obvious, I'm sure, to everybody. Okay, now the actual sketch is running. Uh, if I've got a debug window here somewhere, Oh, there it is. So there it is running and displaying the date of the week, right? So what it's saying is, go and give me those seven bytes. It's just going around this. Now, it's fairly slow in doing it because I've slowed it down deliberately so that it only go and grabs those seven bytes of data every two seconds. Okay, so that we can have a little bit more time to capture the data without being absolutely flooded. All right? We don't want to capture 50 of these things. We just want to capture one and then see how that looks on the scope. So first things first then, as we've got it wired up and it's running, let's uh, go and uh, have a look what this looks like using this device on the window on the computer. So what I've done now is fire up the pulse view um, code right so this is this is now pulse view running um, i've zoomed in a bit so we can see what's going on now you can see it's pretty blank at the moment because we haven't told it anything it doesn't know anything about anything about this uh, it doesn't know anything about anything all right so what we're going to say is we're going to start a new session that's what that little button does so we start a new session then we get something a bit better um, the next thing we've got to say is where's the de capture device now, if we click on that, you can't see that drop down. This is going to be an issue. Right, let me try this again on the monitor. Right, so this is now my monitor you're watching here, and I'll zoom in onto the necessary bits once I've finished all the editing. So as I say, the first thing we've got to do is um, tell it which device we're trying to capture from. Um, now, you can do this by clicking the little down arrow. It says connected device. There's the one I previously connected to, but we'll do this from scratch. So we say connected device. Up comes a big long list of all the possible USB devices you may have on your system. But the one we're interested in is this one here, FX2AFW, is that? Yeah, generic driver. No, I don't know what that means. That's what appeared after setting up all that software. Uh, it now says scan using that one, so scan we will. And there it is, look, the SIGROC FX2LA8 channels. That is, in fact, the very one we need. So that enables us to talk to this device here. Great. So now that's showing us all eight channels. Well, we don't want eight for I squared C. It won't do any harm to leave them, but given that I'm trying to demo this, we're going to actually turn some of those off. So we click this little red pen. Uh, let's disable them all and then just re-enable those quicker. Right, so now we've got D0, D1. Uh, and on here, uh, it does show you quite clearly what D0 and D1 is, especially if I turn it around the right way. Um, all the pin modes on here. So we've got D0, D1 and Earth. You must connect your Earth or you'll end up with terrible um, signals. You won't know what you're looking at. Now, that's all very well capturing that, but how's that going to help us? Because look, if we now capture this, um, I've just got to set these to a bit higher. If I capture, I don't know, let's try 2 megahertz and we'll capture 5 meg of that. And that gives us how long? 3 seconds. Okay, well that's okay because remember that the date here is only being output once every two seconds. So we're guaranteed to capture it 
if we now run it. So let's run it and uh, see what happens. Run. Oh, there was a pulselet. Did you see that? And another one. So if you can see that little thin pulse there, and the one there, we must have just caught it there. That's it. That's what we've captured. Yes, yeah, underwhelming, isn't it, at this point? You think, hmm, how's that exactly going to help me debug anything on the R2C bus? What you actually have to do now is zoom in, because we're capturing this at some enormous speed. And when you think about it, those seven bytes whizzing up from here to here only take a millisecond or two. Now what I'm going to use is my center mouse wheel, and I'll, I'm moving the wheel up. So on my mouse here, I'm using that wheel, and uh, I'm going to move it up, place it over here, and it zooms in. As I turn it, look, you can see it's getting bigger, and as I move the mouse left or right, it determines which way it's going to zoom. Okay, so that way, and well there we are, we can see a train of pulses, right? Hmm. Oh, wrong way, let me get this a bit centred. Uh, there is a, a plus button here for zooming as well, by the way. Zoom in, you see that? Fine. Uh, how does this help us, all these pulses and everything? Well, as it stands, it doesn't. But luckily, there's this little thing here. What this does is decode, as it says in that tooltip, in fact, it decodes what all these are. And there's loads, of course. There's I squared C, SPI, which are two very important ones for Arduino world. But there's loads of them, look. Some I've never even heard of. But we want the I squared C one. That's what, that one there. So I say, yep, that's the one. And then you click the little red thing there and you go, right, how have we arranged our buttons? Um, and the clock is zero and the data we've got on D1. So the SCL, SDA pins are normally marked on Arduino. I'm actually using this developer's board, so it's not quite so easy to see, but it has been brought out to here. But of course, this is now plugged into that. So I am using now A4 and A5 as well, plugged into here. They're just all connected up in parallel. Uh, just a word of warning, if you do this and you don't plug in this side with power to your USB, it basically stops that I squared C bus running. So you must power it all up or disconnect the the hobby components uh, analyzer for that short period. Right, D0, D1. Oh, there, look, now it's interpreted all that. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Oh, in fact, we have captured everything. That's useful. Um, I'll zoom in on this a little bit later. But what we're saying is, right at the front there, we have a start um, pulse or start. How else are we going to describe it? Um, well, it's a it's a protocol that said well that says I'm going to start by bringing down this SDA line here at this particular time. Let me zoom in a little bit more on that so you can see it. Look, we can zoom right in. So here's your if we look notices. Remember that what we said the clock's on the top one and the data's on the bottom line here, right? So the clock's running, um, and before it was brought down, the SDA went low, so they're both low now, and this is what enables I squared C to say, ah, that is a start command as far as I'm concerned. And then the clock runs, and as the clock runs, pulse, 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 uh, the data is brought high for various periods and low. Low actually is when we're active. And what this does is interpret now what all these pulses mean. Okay, so if I scroll write a little bit. This is the very first thing then that we send out from our code. We're saying I would like to write to address 68 and I would like to send out a zero. Why a zero? Well if we go back to the code window, so this is the code and what we send out um, first, look here, to tell it to get ready is a is a write of zero. So here's the address 68, correct? That is the address of this device, the little time clock thing. Um, and then we're saying the last bit of this pulse is zero. So we're saying address 68, zero. And then this little yellow one here says ACK, that's an acknowledge, which basically um, told the Arduino that this has received this. And yes, I've understood what you've said. I'm giving you an acknowledge pulse by doing things at this level here with the clock and the SDA line. There's one little tiny caveat. 
I must bring to your attention at this point. It says here, displayed save address format shifted. And yes, we do want it shifted. Because if you have it as unshifted, look what happens to the address. It says D0. Why D0? Well, because it thinks this whole thing now is the address. So it's it's it thinks this is the rightmost byte bit working upwards with the zero at the end. Okay. And uh, if I bring my calculator into view, what we actually want is hexadecimal 68, isn't it? All right, 68. What does that look like in binary? Well, 0110, so we go over here. So it starts 110, the leading zero has been dropped. And then the next bit is 1000. That's where it stops. We don't want this extra zero. Because if we switch to bin mode and stick an extra zero on there, the hexadecimal address now goes to D0. Where have we seen that? Well, that's what it says over here, look. This is the unshifted address, and that is not correct. We only have seven bits as part of that address, so we say, no, we want it shifted. There we are, 68. So we can take that last zero off there. There we are, hexadecimal, 68 hexadecimal 68 perfect that's exactly what we want so then we have the zero pulse of get ready i'm about to do stuff with you and the acknowledge okay what's the next bit well this is where we now actually write out the zero to say move the memory pointer to the beginning of where the date time is stored um, it's pretty simple nothing there and of course we get an acknowledge back uh, and then after that what do we get data read 68 again fine so here's the one in the end of that address saying I want to read stuff and remember we want seven bytes so here are the seven bytes um, I'm gonna to have to make this a little bit smaller now so it's gonna fit in so here we have the first one it says I'm reading the first bit of data and it's a 15 going back to our code window again we're saying what was the first byte of data that we wanted to read the first one we wanted to read was in fact the seconds so second minute hour, okay. So just move that out of the way again. So those were the seconds. And we're going to move across. Then the minutes. And then the hour in 24 hour mode, so 20. So as you can see, this is a little while ago. Look, it's gone past nine o'clock now. So it was, it was on the 20 hours, but the dates at least, thank goodness, won't change. So what we can say is, it's um, 03, that's the day of the week. Starting from 0 is Sunday, so 3 is Tuesday. Fantastic. The next bit is 24th. Yes, it is. That's the day. Then the month, 12. And then the year, 17. And of course, I've padded it out. And then we have a P at, right at the end here. And that means, if I hover over it, oh, no, disappeared off screen. That means stop. There we are. Well, it just flashed up on the screen then one again. And that is the end of that transmission. So if I squidge that up now that you've seen it once, you'll see that um, all those appear one after the other in a very short space of time. You work out the time, but looking at the top here, this is in microseconds. So you can probably see that this all happens in, in just about you know a millisecond or so. That is exactly what we expect to read from an I2C response in this manner. And just to remind you, there it is, look, there's the, the zero that we're writing first, and these are all the bytes of data that we've just seen on that I2C bus, all coming back exactly as we'd hoped. Super, so that's reading it. Um, how about sending some data down and getting a response? I said right at the front that um, of this video that we were gonna scan for the address here, so let me load up that slightly modified sketch that so just scans for a few addresses and um, load that up and you'll see the response we get back from that too. So this is the slightly modified sketch then for the scanner um, and the only difference between this and the standard one of I've changed the addresses here uh, between 100 and 105 decimal uh, because we know this is at uh, 104 decimal OS, um, OX68 so 68 in hex um, so let's bring the, I've loaded it up, let's bring up the uh, debug window. Here it goes. Ah, oh, now it's saying, look, I've already found the um, 
the one you're looking for. Let me just move that around a little bit. There we are. So it's saying great. I found that at 68. So it's whizzed through um, 60. What did we say it was? 104, didn't we? So it's whizzed through from 65 onto 69 hex, um, and only found one at 68, which of course we knew all along. Um, now let's see how that looks on the I squared C capture. So let's do another capture, and we'll go to the monitor view again, and I'll zoom in on the necessary bits after we've recorded it, if we have to. So this is where we left the last one, so I'm just going to do another run. We'll leave it all as it was, and just do a run and see what we get. Off it goes. There we are, look, we've had um, one pulse. And we'll zoom in on that, I'm moving my mouse up, remember. So here we have a request on hex uh, 64, 65, 66. If you notice, this bit here, it says NAC, not acknowledged. Nothing responded on those addresses, look, NAC, NAC, and all this stop, start. So basically it's just giving out this single byte of data onto the I squared C bus saying anybody out there at that address. And the NAC means basically nobody responded. Nobody held, if you if you like, the SDA line low enough to say yes I'm here. So if we just scroll right a little bit more, there's address 68, which we know is ours, and lo and behold, look, there's an acknowledge on it. So all these previous ones didn't acknowledge with an N, and here on this one it says, yes, I'm here, hence this down here. So all these up and downs on the clocks and holding SDA lines down and so forth, that all means we can now look at visually what's happening on that bus. And this is exactly it. There's no tricks, no smoke, no mirrors on that bus you get these pulses of, of plus five and zero as fast as the eye can blink. You saw what happened when we just did that capture. It was just this tiny little line look. So that was, if that's 150 milliseconds, and that's 160. That whole scan probably took about, what, one millisecond? And it was scanning in that time for about, what was it, five or six individual devices, wasn't it? And there we are. So that's it. That's that's exactly how you could interpret. Oh, I've lost it. <laughs> I've lost my uh, my data. There it is. Uh, this is exactly how you could attach this up and uh, have a look at exactly what's happening on the bus. Now this is I squared C. You can do it for um, SPI just the same, and it will show you no di no difference except that you do need um, well three lines minimum, ideally four, because you've got the chip select as well. Uh, you may not need to have the chip select connected up to this to just have a look at the data on there. You'll see all the data on the SPI bus then if you don't um, put the chip select on it so you can find out when your one was actually pulsed. But that's that's not an issue, is it really? I would suspect that if you're going to use this tool, a bit like what we're doing here for the demo purposes, you just want to be absolutely sure if there's a problem that what you think you're sending out, you really are sending out. And I think we've proven that it will do just that. So I say for twelve pounds, um, it's it's pretty good, isn't it? Let's just whiz back to the um, Amazon page where I got it. So look, just got to find it. Here we are. That's it. So um, yeah, well look, I purchased that on the twenty third of October. Doesn't time fly? Uh, twelve pound fifty six, and all that other software is open source, free, and for what we want in the Arduino world, which which is fairly simplistic, isn't it? Really easy to use. We're not we haven't got you know thirty two channels of some complicated mega fast computer we're trying to track. We're just tracking down a little Arduino, and even if you put it on an ESP eight two six six or an ESP thirty two, it's going to cope pretty well. I'm delighted with the value for money. Really, this comes with these. Um, these Dupont cables, but I have actually bought some some uh, grabbers as well. Let me show you those. We'll be back in a sec. All right, so these basically it's Dupont at one end, so you just put these onto here, and the other end then allows you to grab pins and such. So I'll just put my hand behind it to give it something to focus on. So as you can see, that's a little little tiny sort of well little clippy thing, isn't it? But it's not a hook. No, uh, you can get some hook ones, like on oscilloscopes and things, but this sort of grabs around 
little tiny wires. I did do an, a little test. Let me do a test here with you. So this is a, um, say this was a resistor in a breadboard or something, all right? And you just wanted to clip that on there. And I'm doing it cack handed because I'm looking at the monitor. There we are, look. And on it is, and it's it's pretty strong actually. That's not bad. I'm sure if I pulled hard enough, it it pull it off. But that's pretty good. So you can do that, you see, in your circuit and just grab onto things live, of course. So um, yeah, that's pretty good. I haven't actually used these yet, as you can see. I'm just in the, the demo without them. But yeah, that's that was an option. I think these might be hobby component ones supplied. There are plenty more out there on the internet. We don't have to buy these. Quality, price, normally go hand in hand, not always, but you know, a lot of the time. I'm obviously going to put all the links in for the software, um, where I bought it from, any any things I can find on the internet that will help you do it. But it wasn't that difficult. Allow yourself an hour to get the software up to date and install the driver. And as I say, that funny name driver um, is the one you want. And as I say, if you can't find it, plug this this end. Um, this is in fact a mini, not a micro, that's why I've got this adapter. Okay, so you might need an adapter if all you've got is micro ones like this. Um, plug that directly into your computer if you're trying to plug it into a hub and it not working. Okay, apart from that, I think it's pretty good and uh, I'll be using this in future, don't worry. Great. Okay, right, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.